a wall of water falling on land and flowing forwards in a quick and powerful mass of streams, eroding the ground and demolishing all structures it meets on its way, leaving nothing behind. It could have been a depiction of a tsunami, but it's a human-made cataclysm, a dam failure. The earliest known disaster of this kind happened almost 1,500 years ago in the Arabian Peninsula, in the ancient kingdom of Saba. Archaeologists say the first attempts to build a dam and irrigation canals were made as early as 2000 BCE. 1,200 years later, the people of Saba transformed these early structures into the Great Dam of Merib. With its help, they captured rain and flood water brought by monsoons, and canals they built delivered this water to their fields. The Great Dam stood for many centuries, but time has no pity. As years went by, the mighty structure grew increasingly shabby, and repairs took more and more time and effort. It was breached several times, until, in 575 CE, rainwater overflowed it and the dam gave way, inundating the land beyond in a devastating flood. The irrigation system was destroyed, and people decided the dam was best to be left alone. Nearly 50,000 people moved from their homes to other places. Today, a new dam stands in the place of the historical one, built in 1980 and functioning well. A dam can be natural too, though when such a thing bursts, nothing good comes of it either. In Sweden, there once was a meltwater lake formed because of glacial debris blocking the course of a river. This natural dam was overflowed, and a spectacular cascade of water fell 100 feet down to continue as a river again. In the 18th century, though, several towns were built along the banks of the river, and thanks to lush forests, logging industry boomed there. There was a major obstacle to transporting the logs, however, that same waterfall called Gedunksi. Rivers were convenient for moving the forest, but when it reached the rapids, much of it was lost. That's why, in 1794, locals received permission to dig a bypass canal to change the course of the river and safely transport logs through it. The work was finished despite many troubles, and the water began to flow. But then, in the spring of 1796, a heavy flood made the lake leap and then burst into the artificial canal. People ran for their lives to the high ground, and no one was hurt, but the breach itself was terrible. A wall of water taller than any building of the time passed through the town downstream, and the flow raged for several hours as the lake emptied itself into the canal. In the end, there was no lake to speak of at all. It forcefully went into a bypass, causing a lot of damage to property and the surrounding land. People reported that salmon, abundant in the river, was lying around on the banks and hung in trees. Eventually, though, the dry lake bed became a fertile farmland. In a much more recent event, a human-made dam was breached because nature doesn't give slack to anyone. In 1968, the tallest earthen dam in the U.S. was completed, the Oroville Dam. It's located not far from the city of Oroville in California and was built to contain water from the Feather River. The dam had two spillways, the main one, through which excess water was released in large amounts, and an emergency one that looked like a sloped wall over which water could spill too. The main spillway had a hard and sturdy concrete channel, while the emergency one had only a natural earthen slope. When too much water accumulated and the emergency spillway had to be used, the slope would slowly erode. But that never actually happened, so no one paid much attention to it. In 2017, though, the situation suddenly changed. A crater appeared in the channel of the main spillway, and the flow was stopped not to damage it further. But the water level rose too fast. At first, it burst over the emergency spillway, as the engineers expected it would. But within the next few days, the water started to destroy the slope beneath and rapidly. To avoid this, the main spillway was opened again, even though it hadn't been properly repaired. As a result, the rushing flood went on pummeling the already damaged chute, and soon the concrete surrendered to nature. Water gushed into the hole and washed away the soil beneath. In just a few days, water flowing from the main spillway changed its course and created a new channel to the side. The soil and debris carried by the new stream blocked the river down below, causing the hydroelectric plant to stop. 
But the worst was still ahead. The erosion of the slope could go up to the main gate of the dam or to the emergency spillway barrier. If either of these occurred, the lake would crash down uncontrollably on the land below, where thousands of people lived and worked. Luckily, the disaster never happened, and the spill was finally taken under control. Another dam breach proves that even the best of them aren't perfect. The Tom Sock Pump Storage Plant in Missouri was about to receive an award for innovation in September 2005. It was the first ever pumping station that didn't require constant monitoring by personnel on site. The dam that made the whole structure work consisted of two reservoirs, upper and lower, connected by a long concrete tunnel. The day before the award, an inspection came to the plant to make sure everything was in order. Imagine their surprise when they saw water spilling out of the upper reservoir in a powerful cascade. According to the inspectors, it looked a lot like Niagara Falls. The dam operators immediately stopped pumping water and sent divers to investigate. It turned out several water level detectors malfunctioned, which led to incorrect data being sent to the computers. Until repairs could be done, emergency measures were taken to control the water levels. They were thought to be fail-safe, but they weren't. On December 14, 2005, all systems, both regular and emergency ones, failed to recognize a critical rise in the upper reservoir again. Water started pouring over the wall once more, and this time, no one was present to warn the operators. The waterfall was so powerful that it quickly eroded the base of the wall, and soon, unable to withstand the pressure from inside, the wall broke. The upper reservoir emptied itself through the breach in the wall and sent hundreds of thousands of cubic feet of water down the slope. The cascade was as wide as two football field lengths, crushing everything on its way, tearing trees with roots, and destroying much of the park on the slope of the mountain. Then the outpour flowed into the Black River below, making it burst its banks. But all ended well. The escaped water gushed into the lower reservoir and stayed there for good. It was only by some incredible chance that no one got seriously hurt in the accident, and the plant was repaired and reinforced within the next four years. Some broken dams are best left that way, though. In 1907, the people of Fergus Falls, Minnesota, decided to make their lives a bit more comfortable and built a new dam on the Otter Tail River. It was supposed to generate electricity for the town, and it started doing so in 1908. But the engineers made a fatal mistake in their calculations. They positioned the dam on top of water springs, which slowly undermined the whole structure. Nobody knew it at the time, though, and the dam was put to work. A year later, the two attendants at the powerhouse noticed the lights flicker and fade, and when they looked down, they saw water swirling literally over their boots. The men barely managed to escape the building when the heavy generator was torn from its place and rammed through the exact same spot where they had just stood. They didn't lose time and rode off on horseback to warn the citizens of Fergus Falls. The dam broke right in the middle, and the flood was devastating. The wall of water swished downstream and broke another dam on its way, adding to the debris and growing even more terrifying. Then the stream tore down a bridge in the city and continued wreaking havoc. Three more dams, including the central one, suffered the same fate, and the hurtling flow made the river flood the surrounding area, destroying dozens of homes and farms. The next dam on the Crazy Spill's path was five miles downstream, and its owner managed to get there in time to open the floodgates and let the rushing water flow freely through. This made the outpour finally subside, and the greater disaster was averted. Miraculously, despite massive damage done to the city, not a single person was hurt. Today, the Broken Down Dam, as it was dubbed after the accident, still stays where it was, broken in half and treated as sort of a tourist attraction. <laughs>